Hafide. Hafide, everyone, and thank you very much for being here, Sujuas Maasi. The Committee on Heritage and the Arts, Parks, Guam Products, Hagatnya Revitalization, Self-Determination, and Regional Affairs, to which I chair, will now convene this oversight hearing. For the record, in accordance with open government law, public hearing notices were given to all senators, stakeholders, and all main media broadcasting outlets, with the first notice being distributed on Friday, January 31st, 2020, and the second notices on Wednesday, February 5th, 2020. The public notice was additionally printed on a daily circulated newspaper outlet appearing on Friday, January 31st, 2020, and on Wednesday, February 5th, 2020. Today is Friday, February 7th, and the time is now uh, 525. So as I mentioned, I wanna thank everyone for your attendance at this oversight hearing. Today's public hearing is the Committee on Heritage and the Arts, Parks, Guam Products, Hagatnya Revitalization, Self-Determination and Regional Affairs Oversight of the Department of Parks and Recreation to ensure that the department is fulfilling its mandate, review the work of the department and evaluate the department's operation and performance the committee will focus on today's oversight discussions on the department's management and operation of the two public pools that they operate, the Hakatnya and the Dededo pools. I want to thank uh, Senator Regine Bisco Lee for being here. Uh, she's here to my left. And then we have uh, Senator Tello Taidegui, uh, the minority leader at, who is here as well with us. So thank you both for your attendance. We will now proceed with today's oversight of the Department of Parks and Recreation. The Department of Parks and Recreation is responsible for maintaining and managing all public parks and recreational facilities within the territorial park system. The committee, just as an update, has recommended E. Magahaga's recent board nominee for confirmation and by next session, DPR will have an impaneled board of commissioners and we look forward to their being able to meet and work closely with the Department of Parks and Recreation. So we do want to uh, recognize that we do have uh, the Department of Parks and Recreation, um, at least one potential upcoming board member, and then we have uh, some of the personnel. So the general rules for the public hearing. I hope everyone here today has had an opportunity to sign in and the conduct of the oversight hearing is as follows. As the chair of the committee, I will preside, moderate and facilitate discussion at this oversight hearing. Discussions brought forward to the committee shall be confined to the substance. When you speak, please make sure that the microphone is on and that when you speak into the microphone and and that you speak into the microphone and to turn it off once you are finished speaking. The legislature standing rules call this oversight hearing, uh, call that oversight hearings end at 8 p.m. As we are limited in time, I will be noting many of the issues regarding the pool. I think that's a good place to start because um, that's important for us to all recognize including health and safety issues that have been brought to my attention through constituent letters and other sources. However, as the issues have a lengthy history and are complex, and we are here to understand as well as hopefully work towards resolving the issues, I think that people wouldn't be satisfied if we didn't hear and explore those issues. Um, I would hate for us to run out of time and have not reached some reasonable um, efforts of understanding and hopefully hearing about some resolutions that they have in place. So therefore, I kindly ask your indulgence in allowing us to begin with the examination of the, of the issues, uh, but I will be going over the issues that have been brought forward uh, so that 
we're not evading or shying away from any of those hard issues. Uh, they're very important for us to hear, they're very important for us to face, and they're very important uh, for us to be getting towards understanding and resolving. Once we have had the opportunity to ask questions and uh, hear answers, we will open the table to stakeholders and the general public, and all submitted testimony will be part of the record. I am calling upon the DPR director, the corresponding agency heads and poll experts, uh, should they have appeared, to discuss the issues surrounding the Hagatnya and Dededo pools and their solutions and uh, work towards getting to resolutions, including their short and long-term plans of actions for fixing those issues. So we already have seated at the table the uh, Department of Parks and Recreation Director. We also have the Deputy Director. Uh, are there any others here who have shown up uh, before we proceed further? Uh, yes, Madam Chair. Uh, I have our park rangers, our maintenance staff, our recreation coordinators, our chief engineer, and our lifeguards in attendance, Madam Chair. And, and are they here in the room so that we can call upon them if needed, if they're needed to provide uh, testimony or answer questions? Yes, they are here. Okay, very good. So with this, let's establish the basis for this oversight hearing. This evening's hearing will focus on the issues uh, surrounding the Hagatnya and Dedido pools. The oversight hearing is a key component in understanding the issues and concerns of the stakeholders and the users of the Hagatnya and Dedido's swimming pools. It is the duty of this legislature to exercise its power of oversight to execute checks and balances and to ensure that the entities or agencies it created are fulfilling their mandates and appropriately spending public funds allocated to them by the legislature. This oversight hearing offers transparency and protects the public interest. So I want to go through some of the issues that have been brought to my attention. The first of the emails uh, concerning the pools were received by my office on January 22nd. So some of the issues mentioned that the pools are a center for the sport of swimming and producing great athletes. That the pools serve as a venue for the retired and the senior citizens who need to stay active for health reasons. That the pools are used by Manamco during water aerobics. That toddlers use that pool to learn how to swim. That the pool is an important resource for many in the community. That the pool is used by the polo team that the pool should be considered important in future revitalization plans for Hagatnya. There were requests for oversight hearing. And then there were comments about the pool uh, had turned green, which should be a red flag. There were comments about the murkiness, the turbidity, that uh, those that had been swimming were exhibiting high fevers, vomiting, bacterial infections, itchiness. There were notes of the public health testing that resulted in high chlorine levels. There were recognition of children and parents getting sick from the pool. That at times the chlorine levels were three times higher than acceptable. That the pool tested positive for coliform, a common bacteria in feces that people were understandably angry, that people want to hear how the pool will be maintained even after the $200,000 worth of fixes will occur. At least one person called for a reevaluation of the contract. They want to hear what the timeline and the processes to the fixes are. And there were questions of whether the lifeguards are properly trained to test the pool as is supposed to be their responsibility. And the statement to drain the pool and not try to fix the water in it. So these are uh, 
the various comments that we received, and they are all important to hear. I do thank everyone who wrote my office and alerted us to us. It's the only way that this system works is for people to let us know what the issues are so that we can work at fixing them. So I sincerely thank people for reaching out and letting us know. And one of the things I do hope that we walk away with is having uh, at least one representative who feels like they can work closely with our office so that we can provide uh, daily information if needed, but they feel like they have a real close avenue to getting information. Um, I can work closely with the director, and so we've been going through things on a daily basis about how the pump is, how the backwash uh, control unit is, how the sand filtration system is, and now there seems to be an issue with the gauge, now that other issues are. But I would really like to have a representative uh, from either each of the teams or the, the main swimming federation so that I think communication is key, that we can be providing that communication and those updates on a daily basis if needed. Because I, I think some of the issue is maybe feeling that there's distance or that uh, people aren't being heard and, and we want you to feel like you're heard. We want you to feel like you have the information that you deserve. And like I said, if it has to be on a daily basis, it will be on a daily basis. So if people can be thinking perhaps for their organizations, if they have a representative, uh, I would really like to see that occur. If not today, then sometime in the near future so that we can establish that. And then, um, yes, I wanted to make sure I went that. And so before I begin the questions, I, I do want to point out, and again, this is uh, perhaps something that would be the type of information that would be good to share. So as I mentioned, I've been working very closely with the director over the last year, and even more closely, of course, lately, because uh, these problems have been going on for too many years and they've been going on for far too long. And we have some short-term fixes that have been put into place here and there, but we need longer-term fixes. So we've been calling GIDA to look for funding sources. Uh, we've, been, we've written a bill, uh, at least one bill, to try to get to a funding source so that we're looking at the bigger picture. Um, and I have some notes here. I've been working with some people, um, such as uh, we have uh, Chris Duenas, who is working towards being a board member, so he very kindly has been working with me. I've called Guam High about their pool. We've worked with Leo Palace to try to get access to their pool. I've written a letter to the Admiral about writing, excuse me, using the pool at the Big Navy. Uh, we've been going back and forth, but I haven't heard anything other than they're reviewing the request. Uh, and so forth. And we've been meeting with uh, those offering some assistance and some insights into the history or the issues of the pool. Um, but what we need to do is we need to hear a lot more of that detail from the Department of Parks and Recreation and how they have been working at taking this issue seriously and how they have been um, working to resolve the issues that are important for the entire community. So with this, let me get my questions out. Um, I'd like the director and the de deputy director to go ahead and introduce yourself as you two will be the, the main people that will be answering the questions, at least at this point. Okay, um, thank you, Madam Chair. My name is Richard Ibanez, Director of Parks and Recreation. Offering Madam Chair, Victor Villa Gomez, Deputy Director, Department of Parks and Recreation. So for the director, what is your understanding as to why we are having an oversight hearing on the Department of Parks and Recreation and the Hagatnya and Dedido swimming pools? Uh, in your own words, what would you say is uh, the reason that we're here? Um, first, before I begin, Madam Chair, Senator Lee and uh, Senator 
try to agree. I'd like to apologize to everybody in here that uh, utilizes the pool, uh, Aganya and Dedido. Um, I, I, before I came on board, uh, I, uh, those were the two goals that I mentioned on the media that I wanted to fix both pools. So with that being said, um, when I first got a letter from uh, Ms. Castro and um, I believe Ms. Camacho, I was taking the advice from our contractor that um, the pool levels, pH levels, chlorination levels, alkal alkalinity was safe. Um, and I, I have um, numerous documents of our correspondence and they, the, the certified pool officer who works for the contractor assured me that the pools were safe even if they were, they were green. And I saw pictures and after I saw the letters, I, I went down there and I said, this, is a, this doesn't look right. But he did the test and the levels were balanced. So that drew a red flag after I got the letter. This was before I got the letters. Uh, for Ganya, we contacted EPA. They did a test, and of course, like you said, there was a coliform found in the Aganya pool, and in Dedido, public health was called. There was turbidity, and the back wash controller had some issues. So that's what prompted me to close both pools. So, uh, to a degree, that answers the question. Um, with with uh, what the contractor was telling you, uh, so he did a test, but at what point was it immediately or was it farther on down the line that you called in public health to have confirmation of that testing? It was, it was immediately, right when public health was there, they did another test. Uh, with Dedido, and then with Hagatnya, it happened the next day after I closed the pool. So were the public health tests, were they coming up with the same sort of results that it was safe or were they in conflict with the contractor's testing? They were basing their, their uh, decision on the test given to them by uh, our contractor's uh, pool operator. So the public officials did not do a separate testing that you observed? It, they were using the results no, from the contractor? No, ma'am. They were eyeballing the uh, turbidity and the uh, backwash controller. Now, you mentioned some of the staff that are here. Uh, yes. Is the contractor here? No, they aren't here. Okay. So I do want to note that uh, we had certainly invited the contractor um, did you reach out to the contractor to try to assure his presence? Yes, uh, ma Madam Chair, I emailed them a few times and made some phone calls and I informed them that we do have a pub, uh, oversight hearing and unfortunately they're not here. Uh, what is the name of the contractor? Uh, Canton. Okay, that's the name of the company. Uh, yes, ma'am. Canton. And is that the full name? Uh, the full name is Canton Construction. Canton Construction. Okay. We'll be getting more into um, the, the uh, issues related to the contractor. So at this point, from what you were saying, uh, both swimming pools are currently closed? That is correct. And could you explain well, you did to a degree uh, why the public pools are closed. Now, we'll be going through some of the steps that you've been doing in between then and now. But as of right now, what are the issues that are involved with why are they are closed today? So I'll start off with the Derido pool. 
the contractor reached out to a, a third party business with a different chemical and this chemical actually uh, from what I've seen in the past week and a half since it closed it managed to clear the water and the algae would just drop and they just vacuum versus the previous chemicals they were using it wasn't it wasn't um, getting rid of the algae so with this new chemical within three days well before we put the new chemical we drained the pool 50 percent and then we refilled that did de 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 if I could interrupt you for a minute so why were you draining the pool 50 percent if you could explain that Per the contractor, we, we had to drain the pool because the cyanuric uh, levels were above uh, 50 ppm. So even, even, if, uh, if it's, if, even if it's at 60, 70, 80 ppm, per what I've been educated, no matter how much chlorine you put, it will not, take, it will not get rid of the, the uh, turbidity. Now, is this third-party contractor, uh, is, this, is this a reputable contractor? How do we, what assurances do we have that this uh, chemical provider the, understands our local conditions and, and is considered a, a, a quality provider? This, this uh, chemical provider handles um, uh, the, um, so the bases, they handle Sheraton, Hyatt, I'm sorry, Sheraton, PIC, uh, basically all of KenCorp. And many uh, pools and businesses in Saipan. So along with these chemicals, is there uh, additional machinery that they use or is it just simply uh, a a better or different type of chemical? Well, they introduced to Canton this um, uh, pulsar feeder where it automatically feeds chlorine. Well, it does the reading by itself. There's no one there like the, uh, the gentleman who um, introduced the pulsar feeder to me explained that this will do all your readings without any uh, physical presence. So once it reads that the pH level, I mean the, the chlorine is a uh, low, it'll shoot, shoot in the, the chlorine and uh, pH levels are, are low, then they're gonna, it's gonna adjust. So they're in the process of putting this uh, in Hagatnya and there's one in Dedido right now and they're installing it. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking it's already installed. And they're using that system versus manually feeding the pool with uh, chlorine and, and, and the tablets. And that had been the practice in the past with the uh, contractor prior to this new third party had been manually feeding the chlorine. From chlorine what, from what I've, uh, I've seen. And with this type of machinery and these chemicals, are these specifically what they are using in the KenCore pools to your understanding, to your knowledge? Yes, Madam Chair. And do they have uh, years of experience? What kind of experience do they have here on Guam? Again, the conditions here, uh, from what I've been able to hear from different pool operators, is that in Places like Guam, which have our high amounts of sun, that uh, pools are more difficult to operate and they have kind of higher needs. So we want to make sure that, that this third party has the kind of experience and expertise specifically for Guam. They've been doing this for 30 years, Madam Chair. In the region? Yes.
Okay, and we'll probably get back to some of that because, you know, the quality assurance is really important. I think uh, what we've heard from people is they're having some real concerns with uh, the contract and the contractor as, as the, the pool and its maintenance. Um, and so we really want to explore that, whether that has been managed well. Uh, and certainly if we're bringing in a new third party, we want to be assured, uh, as I said, of their experience and expertise. So since the closures of the pool, can you briefly explain what different plans of action the department has taken to resolve or fix the situation? So let's, let's perhaps start with the Dededo pool. So now, I believe it's gone through different stages. So from the beginning of the notes of itchiness, um, illness, murkiness, green qualities, what have been your steps to rectify or attempt to rectify this situation? And do you feel that they've been successful? So what happened, um, we drained the pool 50%. And then we refilled it. We utilized the new chemicals and it showed it worked. We did this three days after public health um, had us closed down. They came back on a Sunday. Everything looked good. The water was clear. There was no algae. They tested the backwash controller, and I was hoping that they were gonna say yes, but it was just one gauge on that controller that wasn't working. So as soon as we fix that one gauge, they'll, they'll authorize us to open again. Because it, it is part of the filtration system. The backwash controller is part of the filtration system. When you backwash, you can see the, the water just shoot out, but this gauge, uh, tells you how much is coming out and it's uh, not working properly. So we're in the process of sourcing out this gauge. We did reach out to other pool companies on the island and it's, it takes about two days to get a quote and if they say yes, uh, it takes about three days to come to Guam. But we do have, you know, our procurement process on the island, once we do have that part, we still have to get three quotes before we can, you know, get it awarded. I apologize, Madam Chair. Mr. Director, if you could just be very clear and let us know which pool you're, you're talking about. Are you talking, you're talking about Dededo for the gauge. For the gauge. That's the only thing, um, Senator Lee, that we're waiting for. Uh, once we get the uh, uh, three quotes or, you know, whoever does the quote, then it's a matter of because the contractor... The contract states that anything that's a thousand dollars and below, they will pay for, right? But if it's over a thousand, DPR has to pay for it. So if this gauge is two thousand dollars, then we're going to have to locate the funding source to ensure that this thing uh, gets purchased. I'm hoping it's less than a thousand. It should be quicker process if it's less than a thousand because the contractor Contra can simply, has, contractor has to pay for it can out, simply out of purchase pocket. it so right now uh if it is the contractor what would be your estimate estimate for time of uh, getting that back on track and then your estimate of time if the department of parks and recreation has to follow government procurement would it take a week uh, for the private contractor and what two weeks uh, what is that? What are the two timelines? Well, I, I just I'm in constant contact with the we have a chat group and the companies they're working with, um, they're still waiting from the mainland to say if they have that part that that gauge. So to give a timeline, I don't want to you know say uh, I'm going to get the quote in two days and it's less than a thousand, then they have to buy it. So. If it's less than a thousand, I'd, I'd guesstimate maybe a week, a week and a half. But if it's over a thousand, with us waiting for the three quotes from GSA and then the, the process of us getting our money, who knows? 
three, three weeks to a month? So minimum probably of two weeks um, and uh, going upward from there. So with the Dedido pool, I believe there have been a series of issues. There were a couple of machines that were broken down, and so I think that these are important so that uh, people can be assured. I think that there's a fairly new pump, that uh, there have been a couple of machines that were down, one was replaced, and uh, the other um, is now in working order. Can you explain those? Because what we want is, we're hearing now about a gauge. We want to know as much of the machinery, its status, that it's been either newly replaced, it's been uh, fixed, or it's all in working condition. What we're hoping for is that after this gauge is, is provided, that we won't now then find another something else. Because this has been a series of uh, bad circumstances where it seems to be one issue after the other. So can you walk us through some of the machinery that, um, and, and its status right now? Sure. So when I first took the position back in January, we, were, we already started procurement for a pump to run our, our uh, filtration system. The pump that was in Dedido wasn't working for two years. So we started the procurement process. It got approved from uh, GSA, and it was supposed to have arrived on the 25th of January, 2019. Um, if, if I could interrupt just a bit, yeah. So um, just some overall, rather than all those details, I mean, the fact that uh, you started in January, is that pump now in place, a new pump? A new pump is in place with an extra one. Okay. I apologize, have, Madam Chair. Could I just get clarification from the director? You said that the pump wasn't working for two years. The Derido pool, Senator Lee, was closed for almost two years. I know that it was closed for a full calendar year in 2019 and in or two, 2018. And in and yeah. And perhaps part of 2017? Was it closed for part of 2017? Uh, but yeah. also, so that we don't spend too much time on that, yeah. I mean. But, but Senator Lee, from my understanding, it, yeah, it was closed for almost two years. Okay, so. Uh, and, and that is important to, to bring up, so um, I, I thank the good senator for bringing those issues up. These have been too chronic and, and too frequent. I mean, uh, we need to get to a point where this is not the new normal in, in every year life. So we do need assurances. We do have a pump. We have an extra pump. What else has been either repaired or is new at the Dededo pool so that we have assurances that once this gauge is fixed, hopefully there should be no further issue. Uh, has anything else been replaced? No, Madam Chair, just the, the pump and we're gonna replace the gauge. Everything okay. else is worth it, working perfectly fine. Now, you mentioned that with this new third party, there is a new machine there, though. Yes. That new machine that, that puts in that new uh, chemical. And with the backwash controller, uh, had that been down? I, my understanding is, is that they had been manually backwashing the pool, and I think that uh, did not lead to it being or having the potential of what a fully functioning backwash controller will provide. Um, are, are you talking about Dedido, Madam Chair, or again? Yes, we're still on Dedido. Dedido's backwash is working perfectly fine. Um, there was some miscommunication with public health with the, the uh, pool operator. Uh, he mentioned that the backwash controller was tripping but that's not the case. When you turn on the backwash controller, the pump will close and it'll backwash each tank separately, one by one. 
So it, 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 there was no problem with the controller. But I believe it wasn't used for a period of time. Has the backwash controller been on so that we are assured that that assessment that it was actually working all along, has it been on to test that theory for several days so that we know that that theory is correct? Yes, we tested, we tested it in front of uh, public health four times. I believe we backwashed four times in front of them with the, with the machine on. Okay, so with Dedido, we have the new pump. We have the backwash controller that uh, was purportedly working all along, but misunderstood to be not working. So it was manually being backwashed, but only once a week. Yes. But now we will have a fully functioning, continually on backwash controller. Yes. We have this new uh, chemical machine, uh, this machine that distributes these chemicals, and then we're replacing the gauge. Is there anything else we should be concerned about that you're aware of with any condition there? I remember at the very beginning of the term last year hearing about some possible leaks. Are all of those addressed? There's no more leaking going on uh, no. at the Dedudo pool. There's nothing that comes to mind. No, Madam Chair. Now, one of the things before we move on to Hagatnya is with this, the testing of the high levels of chlorine and the high levels of acidity um, and some of this manual feeding of chemicals, what has been the resolution there? Because my understanding is that that actually perhaps caused some of the problems. So if you could be explaining how some of that manual feeding may have been causing some of the problems that are hopefully now uh, uh, resolved. So we did have a parks administrator and a recreation administrator that would keep in contact with the pool operator and the contractor as far as the the levels of the pH levels, the chlorine, the chlorine levels, etc. But they have since uh, been transferred or resigned. So. What has happened is we, I assigned and detailed our engineer to work with, with the contractor now to test the, the water, the pool waters, three times a day. Um, from what I've learned, you, you, don't, you don't test for chlorine at night because you need sunlight, if I'm not mistaken. So... The contractor now is going to do three tests, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, and one before uh, sundown, and give us a daily report via our chief uh, engineer. And has anything changed with the contractor to give us better assurance that there is gonna be increased communication, that this manual feeding of chemicals will not be occurring. Uh, has there been any change for the contractor that give us better assurances uh, that we're going to receive a better quality product where we won't be ending up again with these situations of the green qualities and murkiness and the high acidity? Yes, they have, Madam Chair. They hired a new chief pool operator who is very familiar with, the, with both pools. And what is the background of that pool operator? Um, we want to make sure that we have confidence in her or him. He's, uh, he's actually a nationally certified uh, pool operator and he was the gentleman who helped open the Agania pool back in April last year. Uh, could you repeat the first part of that? He is a certified pool operator, is that what you said? Yes, Madam Chair. And he had assisted in April of last year. Has, has he been a pool operator for a long period of time? Uh, what else is his background? Is there anything else He's that actually also helps a, provide us assurance? I'm sorry. He's also a master electrician, a certified pool operator. And he helped. I have the 
Well, you know, not to take much of your time, but uh, he, he is very familiar with the pool. When he went to Derido this past weekend, he knew where the lights for the Derido pool was or, or you know, where, where to turn it on because public health asked if the lights were working and I didn't know where the lights were. He goes, oh, it's right here, and he turned it on. And So he's very familiar with both poles. That brings me to another question. Um, I remember hearing, I believe it was just last week, that, that some of the lights needed to be replaced. Are, have those lights been replaced? The, the lights are working. Uh, in order for us to replace them, again, we're going to have to uh, source it out. And we're going to have to, once we source it out, procurement process, we have to empty the pool half, 50% uh, or as low as possible so that we can install the new lights. But from, from my last meeting on Tuesday, the lights are working. Madam Chair, with all due respect, I, I absolutely want to hear all of these answers and the questions that you have, but I just want to make mention that this public hearing room is full of people and the public here, they have been here for over an hour at this point, many of them are children, and it's dinner time. So I just want all of us to be aware of that, and if we could maybe have some of the people who have signed up to testify give their testimony at some point, I think that would be really great. Uh, Sujus Masi. Um, and I, I do apologize, I really wanted people to be able to hear answers and um, feel that there is a resolution um, if people would prefer to testify, we can do that. Um, it's it's not to it's not to not hear anyone's issues, but I, I do want to make sure that we have answers to your satisfaction. So, um, if there are those who wish to testify, um, Madam Chair, if I may, just wanted to ask one question straight to the point. Um, with the um, poll, the Ganya poll, I mean, we're, we're hearing everything about Derido right now, okay? And we're talking about getting this particular thing to fix the valve, the backwash, getting in. Derido is un, up and running, correct, right now? It's, yes, it's running, uh, Senator. You just said it is. It, it's closed. It, it's, it's, it's running, closed. it's running, but we can't open it to to the public because of that one gauge but the pumps are the pumps are running and it's back you know it's, it's so it's closed at this point yes okay yes, Senator. now you talk about procurement and you're talking about we're waiting to get all this funding done right you don't know what the cost is for this gauge at all okay in procurement law you're allowed to uh, uh, purchase things below 50,000 without having go to procurement is that still true to form with you with your department Anything under fifty thousand? I'm not. I'm not sure, Senator. You're you are you are not even sure. And this is why it's taking so long for procurement because you're not even sure of the procurement laws. You know, everybody's waiting for this vow. You don't know the answer when it's going to come or anything like that. And and that's what everybody here is waiting for, to hear those answers. And you don't even know the procurement law. You, well, you should know how much that you can spend without having to go through the procurement, which takes almost three months to do that. In the meantime, we have these people waiting for so long. So I recommend that you do find out the laws on procurement and what you can and cannot do. And if you need be, you need to ask the governor to use some of that money to buy, purchase these equipment or these uh, things that are broken to be fixed now. This so, is way too long. So that, so the Ganya pool, what, it's another procurement issue again? Yes, I... Uh, we will be getting to the Haganya pool. So I think at this stage, uh, we are understanding, uh, we're hoping it's under $1,000. Uh, they have been sourcing the part. And uh, if it's under 1000 it will be that shorter period of time that we talked about because it is the contractor's obligation. Well, can I just answer Senator Tartigui's uh, question? Sen Senator, uh, as you know, uh, the, the deputy and I are, are by ourselves. We don't have an ASO. I, we don't have, we don't have an, we have an act, acting AO. Mr. Director, with all due respect, I don't think anybody's worried about what you don't have right now. You have the, you've got a paycheck that pays you quite a bit of money every year. 
to cover those issues. I think the governor put you in place and gave you that nice salary so that you can go beyond. So, as Senator Lee had mentioned, um, is there anybody who wishes to testify or do we want to move on to understanding the Hagatnya pools and, um, and, and its status? And yes. We have a sign-in sheet and there's a few, uh, if you can just go down the list uh, from the sign-in sheet and we'll give a brief testimony. Okay, so for this, uh, in the first sheet that I have, I have a June Perez and Todd Thaisen, I believe is the name. Yeah, okay. Half a day, Madam Chair, uh, uh, Senators. My name is June Perez, I'm a registered voter uh, I guess now of Barragata because I won't be allowed to vote in Tamuning anymore. But I'm here uh, representing uh, my family, the 530 water aerobics class that no longer exists at the Aganya pool because we can't have a regular schedule. And um, just, just uh, anyone that really needs to, to uh, enjoy water activities, stay healthy and take care of their of themselves and, and, and just enjoy this island in, in, in uh, the best way you can as an outdoor activity. We've got a, a beautiful pool in Hagatnya and in Derido, but we clearly have uh, a management issue here. Uh, you know, Gov Guam, I guess, is, has, has never really um, held up its end in, in maintaining the facilities that we've invested in as taxpayers. We bring in these, you know, uh, Olympic-sized pools uh, and, and then expect it to maintain itself for some, for some reason. The bureaucracy and the expertise needed to maintain these facilities uh, uh, clearly are a problem. Our, uh, we need, uh, I, from just listening to our, our friend here, and I do, I do admire his efforts. I'm a GovGuam employee. We have very hardworking people within GovGuam, but we really are, we really are tasked to do, to do more with less and um, work our own budgets if we have to, if we have a, if we, whether we have an ASO or not, N know what our, our buying powers and limitations are and just get the work done and get the services out there that our taxpayers are expecting us to provide. We need a pool, we need a quality pool, we need, and the pool is there, we need to get a maintenance program that has some kind of quality assurance in, uh, uh, built into it. We need, our, I believe, our contractor's uh, contract to be reevaluated. what exactly are we paying for with these pools being continually shut down? What are they maintaining if these pools are broken? And um, just really bring in professional standards uh, for the maintenance of this pool and, um, and, and get the quality checks that need to be in place. I, I think we are, we're, we've been relying on a contractor that's been providing pool services for 30 years. Who's, who's checking on this contractor to make sure that this work is acceptable? Clearly, you know, we, 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 we now have two dysfunctional pools that the taxpayers have been paying for. Is this a contractor issue? Is this a, is this a management issue? It's definitely a GovGuam issue now. It's a, it's a public uh, concern for all of us here, for our children, our future Olympians, for the, 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 the sports teams, for the, 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 the health enthusiasts that rely now as, as, our, as our population on Guam ages, more and more of our, of our health, uh, of our exercise activities are gonna be water-based. We can't, we can't rely on a regular gym anymore to, to fulfill our, our workout activities that are required to, to keep us, you know, to keep us moving. So we need a pool for preventative health, for uh, the support of our youth and, and our athletes, and, and just, you know, to keep this, this island healthy. Um, it's, it's, we've got a lot of, of, of users, we've got a lot of end users, we've got a lot of families and teams that will gladly support this pool. It, it can be revenue generating, you need, you know, you just need the management, management team in there, the expertise in there to really get this pool working again and um, get the people to be enjoying the service that, that, 
we've been we've been paying for through our tax dollars. So I um, I ask you all for your support. I, I commend my my GovGuam buddy here for all the hard work they've been doing. GovGuam is not easy. GovGuam is not easy, especially a line agency to do procurement. It's it's very restrictive. It's very bureaucratic. But we really need to give uh, the, the the pool um, the support that it needs to be functional for our children our, our, and our families. Thank you, Sudus Masi. Sudus Masi, for your testimony, um, and uh, we we do thank you for sharing that. Uh, we also have Michelle Santos. My name is Dr. Michelle Santos. I'm here as a parent, a community member, and an athlete. To set the stage a little, I uh, have this jacket on to show that athletes come in all ages, sizes, and shapes. I wear this shirt to represent my child in her efforts to participate in a sport that she is passionate about and one that she hopes she will someday represent Guam. And I wear this hat for Miss Amy who is in her 90s, who utilizes the pool on a daily basis when it's open uh, for her exercise. Now, whenever one enters a body of water, a certain amount of risk is assumed. Aside from the basic skill of swimming at the beach, we're worried about the risks relative to weather, water conditions, or marine animals. In rivers or swimming holes, it's the risk of bacteria. But in the swimming pool, the types of risks we assume are diminished. One would expect that when entering a pool, to be entering a controlled environment with recommended pH levels, chlorine levels, and basic sanitary conditions. With that said, there is a level of trust that one has with submersing themselves into a public pool. There is the expectation that the conditions will be safe for the health and welfare of our children, of our parents, and of ourselves. That trust was broken when our children, and maybe foolishly ourselves, were allowed to assume that someone else had our best interest in mind. So shame on us. However, a manager or leader is not expected to know everything. But it is incumbent upon that leader to have the right people in place or the right resources in place so that appropriate decisions can be made. And when a leader feels that they are too important to listen to others, or when a leader feels that a title makes them the expert, then we have a problem. So I'm sorry, but shame on you. Madam Chair, I implore you to make some difficult decisions when the health and safety of our children, our parents, and us individuals is at risk. It's time to hold people accountable for their negligence. Help has been offered and it's been declined. Discussions have been attempted and they've been declined. Now it's time for action and immediate repair of our facilities. Thank you for your time. Sujus Masi. Sujus Masi as well. Uh, next, we also have Jennifer Camacho. And if you could begin with your name, please. Hafade, my name is Jennifer Camacho. Hafade, honorable senators, Madam Chair, thank you for being here tonight. Your presence here means a lot to us, most especially since there are only three of you up there tonight. This means even more. I submitted written testimony on January 27th and have since updated it, since I, know where, since I know there has been some positive movement behind the scenes. Many of us here pass by the Haganya pool daily and can see the effort being put in over the past week. With that, I'd like to share an updated testimony, which I've submitted a print copy or will submit one right after this. As a concerned parent of children on a swim team and a fellow triathlete to many in this room, this is the only time I'll say that I'm thankful the pool is closed. This is bittersweet, as we never want our pool closed. However, the condition it's been in recently, the pool should have been closed long before it was. The moment a pool begins turning green, something is wrong. 
and should be a red flag for public officials who we place our trust in to take care of our public parks and recreational facilities. My five-year-old and my seven-year-old both have been very sick from this pool. High fevers, vomiting, bacterial infections, you name it. They were subjected to it. I stopped having them practice with their swim team a month prior to the pool closing. I knew the pool and their immune system could not handle it. Meanwhile, our director continued to say the pool was clean, safe, and tested. I myself got very sick with similar symptoms less than 24 hours after swimming. Again, the leaders of our facilities continued to say the pool was safe, that it was tested daily, that it was up to standards. It is disgusting and disappointing to read in the Guam Daily Post, dated January 18th, that the Guam Environmental Protection Agency on Thursday sampled the water in the Haganya pool and determined that the chlorine levels were nearly three times higher than acceptable levels, that the pool also tested positive for coliform, a common bacteria found in feces. Angry is an understatement. If you visit the Haganya pool between 3 and 7 p.m. or watch a swim meet on Saturday, you will see the hundreds of children doing incredible things and using our pool for what it was intended. Visit the pool at 5 p.m., as June mentioned, and you'll see our Manumku enjoying their water aerobics, water Zumba, or the polo team hard at work. I am sure you're all aware that we were directed to the, de to the Dedido pool shortly after the Haganya pool closed so that our children could hold practice, a pool whose hours were extended to accommodate the Haganya swimmers. You could imagine the disappointment on the kids' faces when we walked in to another discolored body of water that we would not allow the children to get in. You will not understand the impact our public pool has on our community until you see it. Until then, our pools will be neglected, mistreated, and closed. When I, what I see is a lack of passion and concern for these facilities. While our community pool is closed and making our children and elderly sick, keeping our swim teams away from practice, swim meets consistently canceled, keeping our elderly away from their water aerobics, keeping toddlers away from one-on-one -on -one swimming instruction, the list goes on. In my original letter, I urged you to hold a public hearing, and for this I am grateful, as here we are. However, I think tonight should be less about hearing from us, and more importantly, hearing from our leaders. As the swimming community, we simply want answers, and more importantly, updates from DPR, as well as the contractor who is responsible for maintaining these pools. I understand completely that this is not the first time the pools have been closed. I also understand that this has been an ongoing issue for years. We just need solutions and are depending on you to help execute them. As parents and athletes who are incredibly passionate about these pools, we're here to help and we simply want to make sure our pool is safe, clean, and open for everyone to benefit. Thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. Situs Masi as well. And next we have Chris Duenas. Hi, everybody. My name is Chris Duenas uh, with the Guam Swimming Federation, Guam National Athletes Commission, and uh, the newest member for the uh, Department of Parks and Recreation uh, Board. And with that said, as I uh, am appointed to this board, I have probably more questions than I do uh, that are concerns of parents. And I want you to know uh, our leaders here, uh, Madam Speaker, or Madam uh, Chair and uh, Director, that we are fueled by the passion of these people. We're fueled by the passion of the individuals that come to the pool every single day, those that just pass by, and those that actually get their foot in the water and swim. My mom is one of those people who recently joined um, in the swimming community. Uh, for years, I've been swimming for over 20 years now, and she, she finally got in, and she enjoyed it. Maybe at a bad time, because now it's closed, and there's nothing to enjoy. And so 
you know, this is why we're here. This is why we come forth. It's not to, to uh, bring bad blood to uh, the department or the legislature or the administration at all. It's to get answers from the leadership in which everyone here knows that our leadership was appointed and elected. So we want our, your jobs to be our passion and to fulfill our passion. With that said, mine will not be brief. I will have a lot of concerns and I did not write a speech, uh, but I have a lot of concerns in which uh, the pool's funding is operated as I know that we paid off a $900,000 water bill. Congratulations in doing that uh, and now we're moving forward. And now we're moving forward in getting a new contractor. And there shouldn't be any question, and with all due respect, is there shouldn't be a question what the contractor is doing different. The answer is get a new contractor. The answer is for two years since April 2018, he admitted that he has been working with a pool of 25%. Lo and behold, we, he knew that. And if he is unable to repair the pool at which he was granted that funding to repair the pool, nor is he relevant enough to operate it, then I think that we need to find a new maintenance and a new source. It's not a source of funding, it's a new pump. It's a new pump and we need someone new to install that. I think Canton has did a disservice to everyone here who is a taxpayer, whether that comes from the TAF or not. So I think that we all are in agreement here and everyone can agree with me and if you don't then, you know, I think you, I would think you're incorrect. I think the solution here as a board member is to change the contractor at hand and hold the contract to whoever comes on board accountable for their actions. A two year contract at several thousand dollars a month and the pool is not in operation I think they owe us some money. I think they owe the people of Guam some answers. The avid users of this poll some answers. And so, as my director says, is that we test the poll on a daily basis. The contractor, Mr. Sue, did make that known that the contract that the contractor does go down and test the pool three times a day. I would find that untrue. And I would also find it untrue that they're testing the water quality at a time when the sun was out. Because as a resident of Sinahanya, I drive from work every single day and I see the contractor's car there at 5 a.m. and I see it there past nine. I don't know which part of the sun he's looking at, but it doesn't come out at that time of day. So I think those readings are incorrect. I myself took it upon, I took it upon myself during a morning practice and the swimmers are here and they can uh, justify this is that I tested the water's pH levels myself. This is well before I was uh, appointed to the commission. January 9th this year, the regulation for pH level is seven or above seven. It was at 6.8. I need to bring up my notes here because I'm not a nationally certified pool operator. Alkalinity is 80 to 20. We were at 80 ppm. And hopefully our new national certified contractor, third party approved person can explain what ppm is. Parts coordinator? Oh, okay. Well. Well, glad we knew that. <laughs> the hardness is between 200 and 400 ppm. It was not available on register, so I'm sure they couldn't read that either. The chlorine is supposed to be 1.0 to 3.0, it was at zero. And the total chlorine is one to three, it was at 0.5. So if I can read that on the morning of uh, January 9th, 2020, then how come the contractor couldn't read that? If someone who didn't know 
pools or nationally certified could read that, then how come the contractor didn't read that? This is an issue of a contractor not holding up their end of the bargain. And we paid a lot of money for that pool. So I think the question needs to be, who's the new contractor? By all means, everyone go get your nationally certified uh, pool certification and we'll do our three quotes. That's probably gonna take three months. But there was issues when we came in. There was issues when the director came in. But we did small band-aid fixes to fix it. We made small band-aid fixes to please the people that we have an open pool. So we sold you a brand new car with three tires. It's not rocket science. It's a pool. There are so many pools GHRA. Who's maintaining those pools? The management just needs to focus on the issue at hand and it's the contractor because the contractor does not control government funds. The director, the deputy director, and the chair hold, controls the government funds, not the contractor. So we shouldn't be going to the contractor and saying, what should we do? We should be appointing people with certification and put parameters on such contractors. Because I think he needs to come to this table today and answer all these people and all these children and all these grandmothers and grandfathers who use the pool and he needs to answer these people. Because it was our money that went into his pocket. It was our money that went, made him go to that third party vendor. And it was our money that was swindled away in whichever way he wanted to. And all these people are sitting here at 6.35 on a Friday night because they're passionate. So all, we ask you to be passionate, just as passionate as we are. Thank you. Suzu's Masi as well, Chris, and um, we also have, and I'm, I'm not sure, uh, we have a Greta Duenas. Is Greta providing testimony? Are you signed up here? Is that Mitch Thompson? Okay, you're, you're right after Greta. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't missing you. Yeah. Sorry. Good evening. My name is Greta Duenas. I'm with Guam Swimming Federation. And I'm tasked this year to um, host a Micronesian Swimming Championships in May. Uh, we have been slated from the uh, Oceania uh, region, which we're a part of to host the second annual Micronesian Swimming Championships. But here we are with no pool. Um, we have all these teams coming from our Micronesian islands. I don't have any answers for them, nor the Oceana uh, Organizing Committee. So my question to the director is this. I know you've had a um, public hearing down at the pool. What is the status on the procurement of the pump for the Hagania pool? Uh, Greta, we just uh, put an ad out on February 4th. I can give you a copy. It is in the process. There is, a, there is an IFB for a brand new filtration. It's on the corner. Okay. So it is in the process. So, and uh, I just want to mention, um, and I appreciate both of your willingness to work with each other and have discussions, but to keep it orderly, like perhaps if you direct your questions here and then we can be amassing them so that okay. we can make sure that he answers them. But I appreciate the cooperation between both okay. of you. Yeah. The reason why I asked about the status and the procurement is because I've retired with uh, Cabras Power Plant and we've, re um, I'm a part of ordering um, boiler tubes. Um, so if we can procure boiler tubes to come in in less than four months, and we're just talking about one pump, there's a problem. 
I mean, we repair boiler tubes, we, we repair oil fuel lines. So what is the problem here? We're talking about one pump. Where he said, Dededo has a pump and an extra pump. Why didn't we order a pump for Dededo and a pump for Hagania? So that we can tackle both. So we're, we've been fiddling with this procurement process and I really think that we're just beating around the bush. Because if we can shut down the power plant and fix it with less than four months because we have a boiler tube leaks and we have the boilers sitting out in the yard, they're coming in in ships and they're coming in in airplanes and we have this big problem with one pump. I mean, I think that GWA can come in and make assessment, look at the serial number of this, pu of this pump, go out and ha get a RFQ. I mean, maybe this pump is obsolete, but then maybe we can replace it with another pump. It's like Chris said, it's, it's not rocket scientists. You know, I'm pretty sure that other government agencies can come in and help. And I visited Mr. Um, Ibanez, and I told him I'm from Guam Simon Federation. I have this event coming up, and I'm here to work with him. And I've known that in the past we have worked with other businesses. But throwing out this, this dollar figure, of course, if you don't understand the pool and the swimming community, you're going to say, that's a lot of money. It is going to take four months. But for us who understand the the swimming community, and we worked there for more than 20 years, or probably Ed Ching is 50 years, we know that that's, that's not a reasonable answer for us. 200,000 for a pump, come on. We have to treat it like our sink at home is clogged and we went out and hired Barrett Plumbing. I mean, it's, it's that simple but we're throwing all this dollar figure out and so everybody's, yeah, it's gonna close for four months. We just need to um, look at the situation and take care of it. Give priority to the Hagatnya pool because it's utilized by a lot of people. I have a picture here of Naval Station swimming pool where we had to take our young children to compete these are kids that are just learning how to swim and compete. And if they can keep their pool running like this, what are we not doing right? I've been with Swamp Swimming for more than 20 years and this is the worst. Look at all these people that utilize the pool, the water aerobics people, they're here. And not only is the water a problem, parks and wrecks, Come on, this is a junkyard. You have broken vehicles, you have broken riding mowers parked in the yard of the swimming pool. This is disgusting, it's embarrassing. Here I'm going to have people from the Micronesian Islands and this is what they're gonna walk into and we're supposed to keep our heads up high and be proud. We talk about tourism, this is what we want our tourists to see. And this is hazardous to our children. When our children are not swimming, they're running in the yard. So when they climb these broken vehicles and these bro broken lawnmowers, and they get hurt, that's a lawsuit. And the other thing that I wanted to touch is, we have the disabled children that come to Dededo, and they use that, and you subject them to this. So now where do they go? for therapy or whatever they're using the pool for. But I see their faces light up, those dis special children. They're, they're lighting and they're splashing in that water. So where do they go now? We need to, to put a priority on this facility because it's not, it's not only for the swimmers that are going to the Olympics. It's for our elderly, for our disabled. They're all there using it. So we just need to prioritize it. And I know that in the government, we put priorities on projects. Is it priority one or priority 10? So where's the pool? Are we gonna give it a priority one or are we gonna keep it at 10? Thank you very much.
So next we'll have uh, Mitch Thompson, but I did write down those questions um, because they are going to be important to answer. So first we'll hear from Mitch Thompson, and then I will get back to those questions for the director. Madam Chair, committee members, uh, thank you for uh, entertaining our concerns this evening. Just by way of introduction, I'm uh, an attorney in private practice. I've been practicing here on Guam for over 30 years. And during that same time period, I've been a regular user of the Aganya pool. Um, I think it's important to keep in mind that um, the problems we're having today are not recent. There's been many years of neglect. I feel sorry for the director and his staff because they've, in my view, they've kind of been left holding the bag because there's been years and years of neglect and failure to properly maintain the pool. So I'd like to, like to offer up three examples of that. Um, the Aganya pool used to have a nice sprinkler system. And what it did, it would aerate the water, so it would keep the water cooler and it would keep the water cleaner. Um, that was left to become inoperable. So in 2014, another swimmer and I paid out of our own pocket to get the sprinkler system reestablished. And within a year, Parks and Rec had decided they just weren't going to use it again, use the system again. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but um, a perfectly good system was allowed to um, become interoperable again. Uh, second example, in September of 2015, we were told that the Uganda pool would close for one or two months for some needed repairs. Well, that sounded good. What happened? Well, it took six or seven months, and all that was done, as best I could tell, was that there was some paint was splashed around. Um, they fixed, they put new showers in the change rooms, and that was it, and the pool was closed for six or seven months. And of course, the... <laughs> The repairs that were done didn't last. The, most of those shower heads are busted now anyway. My third example, in I believe it was September or October of 2018, it, the pool was closed because DPR had not paid the water bill and apparently GWA was owed $900,000 because for months and months the water bill hadn't been paid. So. In my view, there's just been a chronic se series of major failures, failure to, to really put any effort into trying to uh, maintain properly the pool. So it sounds like what's going to happen is that as a result of all this pressure and outrage, they will slap together something, they'll get some string and gum and kind of get the pool running again. But given the track record, I think we can only expect that even if the pool is up and running in a couple of months, it won't be long before it will be down again. Um, I certainly don't uh, suggest that I have all of the solutions, but I think one major problem here is that basically right now, nobody pays anything or more than a nominal amount to use the pool. For example, if you're over 60 like I am, you don't have to pay. Well, that's great for us, but honestly, we should be paying something to use the pool. The swim teams, they use the pool a lot. I don't think they pay much more than a nominal amount, and they really should be paying more. Similarly, there's people that offer swimming lessons at the pool, private, private persons, and that's great. It's good that kids learn how to swim, but I don't think they're paying anything to use the pool. And right now, in theory, I think that there is a system where you can't pay when you go into the pool. You're supposed to go up to DPR and buy a pool pass. Well, that's great, but it's very limited hours. In other words, if you go at lunchtime when people are off work and have time to do it, you can't buy a pass then. Um, and on the weekend, you're out of luck. So just imagine a family shows up on Sunday. They want to go and want to use the pool. And in theory, unless they've bought this pool pass, they can't use the pool. Now, in practice, no one is checking any of this. And it's kind of a problem because I, when the pool was open, I would normally swim in the early bird session, which would be from starting at 6 or 7 in the morning. And during that time, there's a lot of homeless people running around because no, there's no gate check or no one is checking people that come in. Homeless people come in. I've had personal things stolen from the, the changing area. Now again, you know, it's, you know, a crime is going to happen, but if they, there was some kind of check at the gate, like people were having to pay to come in, um, it would kind of keep homeless and 
other people that might cause problems, it probably would deter them from coming in. So I, I think that, that one of the long range solutions that the government should consider is figuring out a way such that people that use the pool contribute to it. Because I'm sure the DPR is saying, hey, we need more money. This is one easy fix, I think. Just as an example, I was recently in Hawaii and I, I try to swim every day and there was a nice public pool nearby. It cost me $4 to swim. There was no discount for senior citizens, but I was happy to pay the four bucks because the pool was nicely maintained and I, and I felt like, you know, I don't mind paying to, to, to use, to contribute to keeping the pool properly maintained. And, and I think that going forward, that's something that the government really needs to get a handle on. In the past, you did used to, people were collecting money to, to go into the pool. And I think they gave up. Um, I think one issue, as I recall, was that you used to be able to buy passes from the lifeguards, but then some of the money went missing. And so DPR's solution, and this was a prior administration, was, okay, we're not going to, you won't be able to buy pool passes at the pool. You've got to come up to DPR during office hours, which is silly. And so um, I, I, I very much hope that the pool gets patched up and it's operable sooner rather than later. But I think, honestly, given the track record that we've seen, unless some serious changes are made, we're going to be back here in six months, in eight months, ten months, complaining because the pool's been closed again. And so uh, I, I'm all ears. I hope that in this dialogue we're having, we can come up with some long-term permanent solutions so that we don't have a pool closed once every couple of months. Thank you. So each of the people that have testified have, um, and, and I'm not saying that the list is finished, um, have brought forward uh, really important points. And so um, all of these are important for us to be hearing. Um, you did bring up some points. And so I'm trying to, to gauge um, balancing out, making sure that people hear some answers uh, and so forth. So if I, if I could just ask a couple of questions and then we'll move on to um, the next people that I have, I can go ahead and call them forward. We have uh, Mia Lee. Is it Maya? Sen right. Senator, if, just, I just want to touch on one thing. Um, first of all, it's called taxes. We pay taxes. That's how we operate the pool. Second of all, the Guam Swimming Federation and the local swim clubs have been a contributor to the parks and recreation pool out of parents' own money. Major Francis himself, a newly resident to Guam, stationed here, changed out the shower heads, three shower heads, on his own dime. Asked not for a receipt, asked not to be reimbursed, only because his son swam at the pool. The tin at the pool in Agano was donated by another parent. The Guam Swimming Federation has donated parts, chlorine, ample resources for the parks and recreation. So if this becomes a question again as to why the organization are not paying or there is a lack of payment, well, we built Olympians. We built foundations for youth individuals, and that's what's important here not the collection of a fee in the front, because when you jump from 50 cents to $2, it did nothing. We just dismantled the whole thing. And I'm sure that the Parks and Recreation is not gonna put someone in front there to start collecting money and hold a, a, a balance checkbook in the front. I just want to reiterate that the Swimming Federation and the organizations that use the pool contribute heavily to the pool's operations without question and without being asked. Thank you.
to do as Masi. And again, all testimony is important. Um, and uh, that is as well. Um, so we'll go ahead and have uh, Mia. We also have, uh, just before I have you start, uh, if I could always also have come sit up Frank Flores. Rai Flores. Fred Black. And uh, Stephen Conception. Is Stephen here? Okay. Then um, Sebastian Castro. So we'll start with you, Mia. Hafadeh, Madam Chair and Senators. My name is Mia Lee, and I am an 11-year-old student athlete whose second home is the Aganyi Pool. Over the years, I have been taught that leadership begins with listening, and maybe that's how we can fix the Aganyi Pool. I think what we really need is for our leaders to listen. Listen to swimmers, listen to coaches, and listen to experts who know how to properly clean and maintain the pools. When tourists fly into Guam and look out the airplane window, the aerial view of the Aganyi Pool could be mistaken for a tennis court or a soccer field because of the green color of the water. For many in my swim team, when we see other pools, we fantasize the Aganyi Pool could be that quote unquote clean, clear, blue, and a pool where you can actually see the bottom. Over the past two years, we've experienced weeks and months with the pool shut down. When it was open, many times we were lucky if we could see three to four feet ahead of us because the water was so murky. As swimmers, our coaches encourage us to be the best and our team trains to compete. How will, how will we be able to train for competition when we don't have a working pool? Last year, the pool was closed for an entire long course season. Several, us, several of us had missed our chance to break records. Now we are a year older and in a different age division, we will never get that opportunity again. For the past few weeks, our team has resorted to land drills and swimming at Epau Beach. Epau doesn't have diving blocks or walls to push off from. So we can't practice flip turns or accurately measure our times if we don't have the things we need to train. Not to mention the changing tides, current, being attacked by triggerfish or being stung by jellyfish. It's like asking a soccer player to train for the FIFA World Cup without a field, or asking a, so a basketball player when they're training. I don't think they can uh, train properly without a basketball court. Swimming has been a sport where athletes from Guam can compete regionally and even internationally. I am a second generation swimmer. My dad and several of our coaches grew up swimming at the Aganya Pool. They have never experienced closures like this, and that was back in the 1980s. Senators, it's February 2020. We should have a facility that's way better than what we had 30 years ago. Guam should be giving the next generation something better than we had in the past. My six-year-old sister used to swim in our team, but she got sick too, too often and had to miss school. I want a clean pool for me and my team and also for our younger swimmers coming up behind us. Thank you for listening. Now we hope you take action. And next we have Mr. Fred Black. I'm so happy that you're holding this hearing. You were criticized by one radio commentator for why focus on a pool? Isn't that just something for, for the kids? Why not focus on the toilets? Actually, you could focus on both because this agency controls both. All of the restrooms that don't work, all of that, they just are poor managers. And Senator Tidegway hit it right on the head when they said they're more interested in their paycheck and have no interest in the pool. 
The director testified himself. He, he went down after he was reported and saw for the first time how horrible it is. Well, that's just false. We know that they've had very dedicated people that wanted to focus on these guys. The contractor that has all the contracts for the last 10 years has been this one company. And I think when this hearing uh, sets in, you ought to ask for a civil uh, attorney from the AGs as well as a criminal prosecutor from the AGs. And you ought to follow the money. Now, this didn't start with this director. This started, it, it goes all the way back. For the last four years, according to Coach Ching, the pool's only been open half the time. Nobody can plan anything with regard to that. And it's the same contractor that, that works on those things. And I do ocean swims because I can't use the pool. And I see Japanese mothers all the time trying to get their kids into a female restroom at, down there at the fisheye, and they can't. For three years, it's been closed, and these are tourists that help us. Now, it's a different topic, but it's not, because it's incompetence of the management of the parks and recreation, who don't care. The, the idea that the director tells you, oh, we've got such a bright young guy working on it, he's got a certification. He even knows how to turn the lights. I mean, that's silly. How can anybody say what a great guy because he knows how to turn on the lights at the pool? And then Senator Tagwave focused on, well, what are you doing to get these things? Well, I don't know if it's under a thousand, the contractor will have to do it. After that, it's going to take us five weeks or a month. Have they never heard of emergency procurement that the governor can declare an emergency for something? If they were as concerned as these parents whose kids are getting sick in this pool, if they would get out and look at the pool and not go out there for the first time and look at it after the public starts to complain about all the sick kids, not after public health comes down. The guy that was very dedicated to the pool, this particular director told him, don't criticize this contractor. Well, why is that? Why, why tell the guy that's in charge of the pool not to focus on the contractor? Why did we have one contractor? Why did the one key employee in public in the, in the Parks and Recs that was related to the contractor, why has he suddenly been transferred? And why did just today, the day of the first hearing, did this restroom in front of the fisheye open up for the males? I mean, the females is still locked. Apparently, uh, the, the system is such that they have to pump up, but they keep buying a $2,000 pump instead of a $5,000 pump that would grind it up. The female part of it gets more toiletries dumped in it. And so it breaks down. They know this. We've told them this. And for three years, they've kept that. The, the Japanese come here and they pour money into our economy. And these guys just ignore them. The heck with those guys. And they ignore the general public. The public is coming and saying, hey, we trust these guys, but we're getting sick in the pool. Well, of course you're getting sick because nobody cares within the parks and rec. And if they do care, the director tells them to stand down. Don't criticize. You're in charge of the pool, but I'm in charge of the contract. But who's in charge of the contract? People, apparently this new operator doesn't know what he's doing in terms of the pool. Maybe can turn those lights on and off. The director has no concept of what the procurement laws are. He has no idea, never mentions emergency contract. From, from what we're hearing from all these people are getting sick in the pool, there have been emergencies. I'm just here as a private individual. I play water polo. My kids were raised in the swim team. Coach Ching and Don St. Augustine educated along with uh, Raleen's husband was a swimmer. All these, there's tens of thousands of people that focus on the pool. In a society that doesn't care about their recreation, doesn't care about the facilities, a director that doesn't have any concept of, of how to get something through procurement obviously hasn't even asked. Such a crisis, and the guy that's in charge of the machinery hasn't even asked. It's embarrassing. Why is it that all the private hotels have clean water? Why is it that the Navy pool has clean water? Partly because they've got, to, they've got to appeal to their paying customers. Parks and Rec ignores the public, sits back and allows kids to grow sick in the pool, only comes down to look at it, even after internally, they've been advised what this contractor is doing. 
the same contractor, apparently it's 30,000 a month that they get paid. 30,000 a month for what? What are we getting? They've, they've hired one guy now to kind of, who apparently has some type of uh, certificate, but we're getting the same thing. Now it didn't start with this director. This, in the last four years, according to Coach Ching, the pool's been closed two years of the last four years. So I don't mean to just focus on this, although this is a real low. And I know that uh, Lou Leon Guerrero, the governor, her kids grew up in the swim teams. Everybody wants, everybody in this room, including I'm sure the director, wants this pool to, to open. And the problem has been a major problem long before this director came on. It's just at a very low point at this time. So I would recommend that this, uh, this uh, hearing, which is, is invaluable, uh, bring a couple lawyers uh, from the AG's office, get, uh, get a, a, a civil lawyer as well as a criminal lawyer to follow uh, why is it that one particular firm is getting all the contracts, why is it the, the guy that's in charge of the pool is told to stand down, don't talk to the contractor directly, why is it that the, that the director is so impressed because the guy knows how to turn on the lights? I mean, it's a joke, it, except it's so serious when you, when you hear uh, the passion of the people in this audience who put their kids in that pool. And the kids are getting sick for months and years, and the director just figures it out. I mean, we, we really need to do something different uh, the, the director's salary perhaps should depend on ability to run the pool. Maybe we need to private, privately run the pool because Parks and Rex has no concept of how to run the pool. They hire one guy, listen to him for everything. Separate tests are done and it's clear that they're not maintaining the pool. They measure it uh, suddenly when they've, when they've upped the chlorine, but most of the time it doesn't have any chlorine in the pool. Anyway, I've talked too long, but thank you so much. Seduce Mossy, and I, I do want to point out, um, and, and I do appreciate uh, people recognizing that this has been a longstanding issue. It's, it's uh, something that's been uh, going on for a long time, and, and that's why uh, we really want to get to some long-term resolutions. Um, I think Mr. Thompson was saying, and certainly we don't want to uh, stick a piece of string and gum together and, and act like it's not going to happen. And so when we get back to the questions, that's why I want to be really thorough. I don't want to uh, hear that something that's just been repaired. I want to hear that it is indeed a new pump that that gauge is being replaced. And I, I do want to point out, just for context, it's still important to look at everything as closely as we are now, but somehow uh, oversight over the Department of Parks and Recreation fell through the gaps last year and there was absolutely no oversight. And so I think uh, that's, not, that's not everything, but I, I think that created some major issues where it has evolved to this this point where it is today and um, definitely i think any senator here uh, is going to be committed to looking for those long-term solutions because that gap last term shouldn't have existed where there was nobody to call an oversight there was nobody to call anybody in and um, and we need to make sure that this year we're doing it in a really meaningful way so that it isn't, hopefully, it isn't something that uh, is fixed now and then two months later we're back in here. I really do want to find long-term solutions. So with that, uh, I, I apologize. I had gone from Mia and then there was a, a Ray and somehow my eyes had skipped down to uh, Mr. Black. So I accidentally skipped over and I do want to have uh, Frank Flores go next. I apologize for my eyes having skipped over your name earlier. No problem, Senator. Good evening, Senators, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Frank Flores. I'm a swim team parent to two awesome boys, a swim, Manhoban swim team coach for an incredible group of young swimmers. I graduated from the Air Force Academy in 1992. I swam for their college swim team. 
I represented Guam in the 92 Olympics, and I retired from the Air Force as a colonel in 2017. And I've been swimming in the Ganya pool since 1978. So all of us are here for two simple reasons. We just want to swim in our pools, and when we swim there, we just want to be clean. Very simple. That's it. We'd rather be training right now than here in this hearing. We appreciate your time. So since I retired from the military, I've been trying to be a little nicer and kinder and use, but I'm really angry right now. Poor leadership and a substandard contractor have led to us exposing our children, our swimmers, our Special Olympians, our Manumco, ourselves to unhealthy conditions. And my kids, this is my son Rai to my left, were put at risk because of poor leadership in the department and an unqualified contractor. So first, the pools are very important to us, not just for swimming, but for the swim teams, they're training ground for the highest levels of the competition. And we've had people do well nationally, internationally. We've had people who have trained to be great leaders. And among our ranks today, as we've built character and leadership in that pool, we have swimmers who've been top in the nation, top internationally, several Olympians, several triathlon champions, U.S. triathlon champions, college division champions, Air Force Academy graduate, retired colonel, a Marine Corps sniper awarded the Bronze Star for Valor for combat action that saved lives. We're doctors, we're lawyers, we're business owners, we're college professors, we're teachers, we're a lot of people who are giving back positively to this community today. So many of the lessons that we learned, we learned at the Iganya Pool. So thousands of people have learned to swim at the pool. Our water polo players use it to stay fit. They use it to get ready for international competition. So many of our Special Olympians we've seen found victory and happiness in that pool. The pool is very important to us. And this pool has been training lifeguards and firefighters and scuba divers from throughout the island. So many of us love that pool and we appreciate the lessons that we have learned while we've used the pool. And people here hate it when the retired military guy gives everybody advice. But if I do not give advice today, then I fail my swimmers, my kids, this community, just like the leadership in DPR and the contractor have failed. So I teach my kids to not only highlight problems, but to solve problems. Tell them not to be high problem highlighters, to be problem solvers. So I have several recommendations for how we can fix this. Number one, our standard for pool operation should be that it is open 95% of the year, and every time it's open, it should be safe to swim in 100% of the time. That's the standard that we should start with. 99%, 95% availability and 100% safety. For us swimmers, is that, is that a good standard, swimmers? And that's how we should grade leadership, and we should grade them in the media. We should use those standards for the contract. And we should use the standards that the Center for Disease Control uses, which is called the Model Aquatic Health Code, and incorporate those into locally established guidelines so the pool is safe all the time. So that's your report card. Number two, my last job in the military, I was installation commander for 21 sites throughout Alaska and the Pacific, across 14 million square miles. Many of these were radar sites that guided thousands of airplanes, protected millions of passengers, and detected Russian aircraft headed into our airspace. And all, almost all of my sites were built in the 50s. I inherited a lot of problems. But on day one, those problems were mine. And I left a three-year command with zero aviation incidents, zero safety incidents. And I did that using a program management perspective to leadership, where I would take monitor system availability daily, and I would engage my team or, and the contractor if things were not working on a particular day. Number two, I would monitor contract performance every month, and I would not pay the contractor or I would withhold money if they failed to perform. This type of monitoring is required in the Department of Parks and Recreation. Number three, DPR needs an operating instruction that defines roles of the lifeguards, the leadership, contractor, roles and responsibilities, because when something fails, everybody does this. Somebody needs to be accountable. Somebody needs to be responsible. And today, no way, nobody truly assumes responsibility for the problems. Number four, fire this contractor. Fire this contractor. 
and determine if there's some inappropriate relationship between the contractor, somebody in the department, somebody in the government. And we need to see if this contract is still being paid even if the pool's closed. That's unacceptable. And the public deserves to know how much this contractor is getting paid. So, contractor, if you're hearing me today, understand this. Your failure to perform has put our children, our people at risk. In addition to that, you brought dishonor and shame to your company. Ridiculous. Number five, use a system of quality assurance with a contract evaluator brought in from outside the department to evaluate contract performance. Do not use somebody from within the department. And allow that contract evaluator to determine if people get paid or not, if the contractor gets paid. Number six, put in place a system that monitors water quality for safe swimming every day using the model aquatic health code from the CDC. We shouldn't have to wait until the water turns green to check if it's safe. So the media reported the day to pool closed last week, but what it did not report was that before it closed, I as a coach, parents, looked into the green water and we refused to put our kids in that water that day. We did dry land training instead and only then was the water tested and the pool closed. Number seven, use some sort of public-private partnership to maintain our pools and leverage the hotel industry, anyone that's certified, qualified, and knows the CDC standards. Many pools are operated throughout this region with more capacity than the Agania pool. The only difference is when they fail to operate properly, they lose money. Number eight, department owes the people of Guam a get well plan with associated costs. That gives us not a band-aid fix because if nothing changes today, we're gonna be in the same boat two months, three months, four months from now. So in closing, poor leadership and a substandard contractor are to blame for the problems at our pool. Pool should be available 95% of the time, and every time it's open, it should be safe 100% of the time. These standards aren't negotiable, and when our government officials and contractors are determining how to fix this, these problems, do this. Imagine that somebody you care about deeply, a baby, a child, grandparent, yourselves are going to use that pool and then develop unselfish solutions that are worthy of true public service. Thank you. Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Rye Flores and I'm very young and I do not know a lot of things about what is going on but I would still like to say that this pool is something many of us need and want. Without it, this pool won't be able to, to, we won't be able to improve our swimming and practice. And we won't get a lot of exercise out of, or we get more exercise when we swim. Thank you. Yeah, I don't have a lot to say. Okay, so we do have uh, quite a few people that are still on the list. Um, and this is part of the dilemma is, I mean, I do want to get to some answers. So do people prefer to continue testifying? It's important to hear the testimony, of course, but at the same time, I think you want answers. Um, the next people I have for testimony are uh, Matthew Artero. Did, oh, sorry, Stephen, you're there. And then did Sebastian Castro, he, oh, you're Sebastian, got it. And then Stephen had left, right? Uh, we have Matthew Artero, uh, Dana Bollinger. Nicole Murphy. Ray Mayo. Okay, uh, Haani Mayo. So if nothing else, it's good to recognize that you're here. Uh, Koa Soriano. Uh, Dina Soriano. Okay. 
Celeste, sorry, is that Marie? Celeste Marie? Uh, Ed Ching, Andrew Lee, Christina Ingerson. We also have, uh, sorry, Sebastian, you're being very patient, so thank you. Uh, just trying to get people up here if they want to be able to testify. Uh, to Mommy, Saro, Taiga Sato, Dina Sato, Georgiou Sato, Brett, I'm sorry that I'm struggling with the last name, uh, Burn, Burnham, thank you. Uh, and Shane Black. So we have people at the table, uh, so we still have three more testimonies, and then we'll be able to have time for the questions. So Sebastian, thank you for your patience. Uh, please go ahead and start with your name. Thank you, Senator. Half a day, everyone. My name is Sebastian Castro, and I'm a Manhoban swimmer. Compared to everyone else on the team, I'm relatively new, but swim now is a huge part of my life. I've improved so much since I first started and I was even able to represent Guam in the past Pacific Games. The coaches have pushed us to our limits and we've learned so much about being mentally tough and pushing through obstacles. They've taught us to be tough and resilient. But right now, we're seeing Aganya Pools closing as one of those obstacles. We've continued our training at the beach, climbing coconut trees, climbing lifeguard towers, jumping walls. And our coaches tell us that this is what separates us from the people stateside. Because once I go to college, I'm going to meet so many other swimmers with such different training regimens, and I'll be able to proudly say that I was coached on the beach. And we will continue to make use of the resources that we are given because we are resilient and we are unique. But do we want our uniqueness to be the lack of a pool? And everyone on our team, we're all Olympic hopefuls. You know, we all have a dream to represent our island at the biggest stage in the world, but our dreams won't be fulfilled if we don't even have a pool to practice in. So we're here today as a group to ask those who can make it happen, please give us that opportunity and help us have a shot at our dream. Thank you. So just Masi, Sebastian, um, I believe Matthew Artero, you're next. My name is Matthew Artero. Uh, thank you everyone for being here. Um, and listening to some of the testimony, I was questioning myself, uh, perhaps we need a public law that government contracts require contractors to participate in hearings. So the Ganya pool is the only public pool suitable for sports. The hours have been shortened, affecting both athletes and people who rely on it for their health. Just as in every other aspect in life, athletes and those exercising for health need a reliable environment with frequent feedback. At home, our socks are always in the same drawer. In our kitchens, our flatware and dishes are always in the same place. At work, equipment and materials are always in the same place, not just in fire stations and hospitals. In stores, refrigerators have glass doors which provide us with immediate feedback, letting us know what's there without having to open the door. In the ocean, coaches cannot provide the immediate feedback they can provide in pools. The ocean is also a less reliable environment than a pool. Depending on maturity, to achieve their best, a 10-year-old might need to swim an hour to an hour and a half or to two hour, an hour and a half to two hours a day. An 18-year-old might need to train for four hours a day, and it goes up from there as people mature in order to be at their best. When the pool is closed, just like, or has shortened hours, just like uh, schools have makeup days, athletes and people who rely on the pool for health also need makeup days that they will never get. Thank you. And then Mr. Ching. Thank you. I want to keep it short. 
I just want to make some comments. Number one, the pool has been closed for two years over the past four years. The first time for about a year and a half. The second time, it, it, it's, it waited for a few months and then it closed again for another six months. And each time they told us, we're gonna fix the pool. We're gonna fix the pumps. Every time they told us this, I don't know if it got done, but here we are again. We're gonna close the pool, we're gonna fix the pumps. What, is this true, is it correct? Are they doing it correctly? I don't know. Is it misrepresentation? I don't know. The point is, we were told it was gonna be done. Now it's closing again. Another point, all the other large pools, Leo Palace and Navy and the militaries, the pool is clean. They don't have a problem. They know how to run it. The Agania pool closes once a week. Every Monday, the pool is closed. And they told us the purpose of that for the past 50 years, it's the purpose is to clean the pool. Is it being done? No, it's not. To keep it clean, that pool should be vacuumed every day. And the chemicals should be put in every day. Now, at one point, they said, oh, during this discussions here, one point that it was highly chlorinated. That indicates that high amount of chlorination, they shocked the pool that, that morning. So they super chlorinated it to, in hopes to kill things. Well, it didn't work, did it? It takes a period of time. So that's why it was a high amount of chlorine. But before that, it was zero. They didn't have chlorine. And a lot of times they don't have chlorine. Not being run correctly. And yet the pool is closed once a week. And the other pools are not. And yet they're kept clean. The final thing I want to say, as uh, was commented about charging fees for the pool, which would help. Well, it's very small. Recreational facilities overall do not make money. You're not gonna make any money. You're not gonna make enough to cover expenses. It's not gonna happen. The recreational facilities and hotels, they're not a money maker. They lose money. It's there to upgrade the rooms so they can get four star, five star ratings. Recreational facilities don't make money. And besides that, as Chris Duenia said, the Swim Federation has donated a lot of things. All the roofing on the outside of the, the shelters out there was paid for by the Swim Federations and the teams. The water fountain, that came out of my pocket. And that was donated on behalf of the, the Manhoban Swim Team and the Swim Federation. And many other things was paid for by the Swim Federation. We have contributed substantially. We've paid for many, many times for the chemicals and whatnot. During the last so-called the, the uh, stakeholders meeting, which was held several weeks ago, the contractor said they test the water twice a day, once in the, in the, in the daytime and once at night. And I said, you're crazy, that's not enough. Especially on a sunny day, you should be checking it every two hours. It's not being run correctly. In my opinion, the contractor doesn't know what he's doing. It's a construction contractor. Does he really know how to run the pool? They said they're certified, I don't know. Show me their certification. Show me their experience. Check it out. Anyway, that's my comments. I'm upset. Uh, just for the background, I'm the president of the Guam Swim Federation, and I've been the Manhoban coach for the last 40 years. Thank you. So, do it, Masi. Uh, Mr. Ching, and then uh, the last person we have, I believe, uh, is Mr. Brett Burnham. Yes. 
And if you can start with your name, please. Yes, I'm Brett Burnham. I live in Talafofo. Uh, it's so good to hear the, see, hear the kids fighting for their pool. Um, I'm really, really proud to see them. I'm here to talk about the other end of the age spectrum. Uh, I'm a member of the water aerobics crew that, that uses the pool. We've got about 40 members, and they range in age from 92 down to the, probably the mid-30s. Um, I'm 67, and I'm only in the mid-range of that group of people. We've got 80s, 70s, 80s, 90s pe people. They're in that filthy water trying to get some exercise. And believe me, we need it. I had a stroke two and a half years ago, and this is the best, best exercise I can get. I haven't been able to get my exercise, and I can feel the, the degrading of my body as, as time goes by. Also, I want to point out, as far as working with a contractor goes, I retired as, the, as a supervisory contract specialist for the Naval Engineering Facilities Command at Big Navy. Um, I know how to deal with a contractor. I've dealt with several that are very difficult to deal with. And the first rule in contracting is you don't let the contractor tell you what's going on with the pool. You give him instructions, you turn him loose, and you have your own, con your own people keep track of what's going on with the pool. It's, it's got to be that way. You, you can't compare the Hilton's pool with the Hagatnya pool. It's, it's an order of magnitude bigger than the Hilton pool. So you, you got to have our own people, trained, experienced people, to watch over that pool. And as an idea, you could ask the military for a copy of their requirements for how they maintain their pool. Now, trust me, you can't afford it. They get a lot more money than we do. And you can't afford it. But it's a good start at figuring out just what we want the contractor to do when he's taking care of the, of the pool. And that's about it. Thank you. To do this, Ma, see Mr. Burnham. So uh, I do want to go over some of the questions that were brought up uh, before we get back to some of the other questions that I had. So there was some discussion about the replacement of the facilities. So I think we've talked about Dedido pretty fully. And um, we're hoping that it's a true turnaround with the new pump, with the new um, machine that distributes the new chemicals and the backwash controller that is working, this new gauge that will be going in and this new light, we hope that that's a true turnaround and that's not just one of those things that is going to be setting this up for disappointment in a month. So we, we do need to look at that really seriously and make sure that we are addressing all those issues so that it is a long-term maintenance and continuation plan. So looking at Hagatnya, now one of the things um, people, various people had brought up uh, realizing that this is not a new situation uh, for the year prior in 2018, it was, the pool was closed, I, I think essentially all of the year and so forth. Um, in going through your files, I believe you came across an assessment from 2015. Can you tell us essentially what was in that assessment and what it was outlaying in, in relation to the Hagatnya pool? Sure, Madam Chair. Um, oh, can I answer uh, Senator Teletaitigui's uh, question about procurement? Um, we do have a park and recreation fund that we deposit um, rentals and uh, permit fees. And uh, as soon as our committee, our advisory board is impaneled, we're waiting for Chris. With the approval, I can purchase, some, uh, purchase 
anything to renovate or maintain under 25,000, Senator? Okay. It's, so you found out it's 25,000 now? 25,000, correct. I wish you knew that beforehand. By the way, it's 2014, not 2000, uh, the assessment. I, yeah, 2014. I, I corrected, sorry. So um, back in 2014, there was a Hagatnya Guam Aquatic Facility Swimming Pool and Mechanical System Improvement Analysis and Recommendations uh, that was prepared by a company called CHA and it was paid for by the Guam Economic Development Authority. I just want to share with the panel and the audience uh, what we discovered uh, from the assessment. I can go down the line. Uh, all the improvements that the, the CHA recommended back in 2014 was leveling the pool structure, and these are the degree of importance. Highly recommended, estimated cost 200,000. Pool concrete shell repairs, the main pool, highly recommended at a cost of 15,000. Pool finish upgrade, the main pool, highly recommended between 98 to 247,000. Pool joint sealant addition, that's both pools, highly recommended, 11,425. Main drains replacement, both pools, highly recommended, 24,000. Gutter pool, gutter replacement from the main pool, suggested at 95,000. Def marker, no diving sides, signs, highly recommended at 8,700. If pool I piping. Could, yeah, if I could interrupt I, you for a minute, I, because it is a lengthy list, and so I think it's important that people do hear uh, the gist of it. Okay. That it is a lengthy list, but if you could get us to the total of uh, what we're looking at that have been issues since 2014. So this is including the filtration system. The total would have cost us $1.8 million. So this is part of the challenge and we do need to figure out answers to it because our community deserves this. But ten, since 2014, we've had $1.8 million worth of issues, no oversight uh, for those last two years prior to 2019. So. For 2017 and 2018, there was no oversight, uh, nobody to be checking in on these issues and, and holding the situation accountable. And we saw that there was closure for something like a year or more. So these are the challenges that we need to address. And I, I want people to keep that in their mind that this is something that we will be working toward. Yes, um, uh, Madam Chair, this is 2014. It's yep. 2020. I'm, I'm sure right. it's going to cost more than 1.8 million. Right, and and um, I, I do think there needs to be an updated assessment along with that, um, so that if it's done, it it's not some string and some gum, and uh, we're we're basing it on something from five or six years ago that we're we're doing it all properly as we move forward, and so. It will be incumbent upon this committee to be looking for that funding because we can't continue to have these short-term fixes. We can't continue to ignore $1.8 million or more in needs and uh, continue as if those needs aren't there. So this committee will have to be looking for that funding. We will have to be looking towards updating that assessment. Madam Chair, just a point of information. GDOE also has some $70 million in deferred maintenance, and we don't see the schools closing down. They still have to operate. They still are part of what the public expects. And so I just don't really see how this is a, it just really sounds like excuses to me. So I'll allow you to continue, but just for some clarification, $70 million in deferred maintenance and GDOE is still able to operate. So let's just get some perspective here. 
Madam right. Chair, if and I may just ask one question real quick. Um, because we talked about the assessment. Second. This yeah. is regarding the assessment. Yeah. If you could just hold the okay. just a second, <laughs> I'll give to you, Jack. I just want to know if, if you can, Madam Speaker, I mean, Chair, it's just you've n had this, how long have you had this in your hand that you've known of all these issues and problems? and when have you started making your own assessment since you came in in January of last year, Mr. Bennett? You and I are friends. Yes, You know, yes. you and I are good friends, but yes, well, I'm, I'm just as upset as everybody else here tonight, right, okay? Right. And have you started an assessment? Not like we're going to start one, but have you started one? So to answer your question, Senator, when we opened the pool in uh, April and May, I'm sorry, no, it's just March real quick, because I only get a short time. Have you started an assessment yet? Taking this, when did you see this, and have you started your assessment? Yes, we did. And do you have anything in front of you to show what you, a plan that I you can, have in place? I can get, get it to you. I can email you can it, get to it to you. get it to me? Okay. Yeah. I'd like to see it. Thank yes, you. Senator, absolutely. Right, and so uh, we'll, we'll be getting to those questions. Um, it is important, and some of the chronology is important here as well. So with that, um, when did you find out about this particular assessment and report? Pardon me? With this particular assessment, when did you find out about it? Uh, February, maybe a month after, after I... Uh, became director when I came in. Okay, and at the time I believe you had a, a recreation manager, so was he working on those issues? Actually we had a acting park admin administrator and recreation, but they were both working on it. So, but they, one has been transferred and one since has resigned. Okay, so uh, the, Im the important thing is, is that it has been worked on. We do need to see that assessment um, where it's at and then because we need these long-term fixes, we do need to find the solutions of the final update of that assessment. Yes. Um, I believe this one cost over $40,000. So uh, these, are, these are done by experts and uh, we, we may be needing to find funding for that. But the important thing is, is it, it does need to be done these issues do need to be tackled. We do need solutions to this. Um, in, in continuing with Hagatnya, uh, one of the testimonies had brought up the issue of the sprinkler. I'm not sure if that's the correct term, but I believe that's the term that was used in the testimony. Is, is that uh, still usable? Is that repairable? What is the status of that sprinkler? They just installed the pump for the sprinkler today and they're waiting for the glue to dry and they're going to test it tomorrow the aeration system should it work and is that pump something that the contractor replaced yes uh, okay and um, some of the smaller issues but still important issues uh, we'll be looking at later it's more important to get the pool into a functioning state but i do think it's important that you look at the issue of pool passes. Um, with this particular contractor, uh, because it was brought up several times as to the length of time that this contractor has been servicing the pools, how long has this particular contractor been servicing the Hagatnya and Dedido pools? The contractor was awarded the uh, purchase order of February of 2018. And to your knowledge, did he have that contract prior to this or is he completely new to this situation as of 2018? The contractor, as far as the pool, he's, he, he, he was new as far as getting awarded. Canton did do some work for DPR back in 2016, but it was to fix the baseball, f the, the softball and baseball fields at uh, the sports complex in Derrida. So, so that I can give some time to those that are here, um, please get us up to speed with Hagatnya. Now we've talked about the sand filtration system. That's the one that needs to be completely replaced. 
Yes, yes. Um, you mentioned, I believe, that there is going to be, uh, I, maybe it was installed today, that new system that's going to be distributing the chemicals. Uh, so, so walk us through what has been replaced and what is slated to be replaced or fixed so that it is truly functioning um, before we tackle the bigger issues. Okay, so for Haganya, they added, they're gonna add the pulsar feeder and they added the pump for the uh, aeration, the sprinkler, so that it can agitate the water so it can um, uh, fil uh, filtrate uh, better and then they change the chemical. Uh, I, I Maybe tomorrow I can email pictures uh, before and after to all of you. I have all your email addresses. The thing is, the contractor is doing a fix to Aganya and they're gonna try to make it, it's another Band-Aid fix. They're gonna try to get the pool working and, and then by that it should give us time to get the filtration system with the IFB that just went out. But if not, then. Um, so if I can interrupt you for a minute, it, are, are you saying that the four months is the replacement of the sand filtration system? The whole, fil yes, the whole okay. filtration system. So that's going to be brand new. It's going to be fully installed. Um, but they are working on a temporary fix Yes. Uh, prior to that. And this temporary fix is going to have the aerator or the sprinkler system. New gauges, and then they're going to the make sure the gauges, backwash works. It has works the new pump. It that. has these new chemicals by a reputable firm. So is this the same firm that is also taking care of all the KenCore pools? Yes, Madam Chair. Okay, and um, walk us through just a little bit, not too much detail because we are short on time, but with that SAM filtration system, um, where are you at with that procurement? Are we still looking at four months? Well, the, the, the IFB went out on the 4th and their time frame to turn it in is on February 19th. So we have another week or week and a half or so. And then after that, it takes another week or two un unless there's no um, uh, objections or people that, ob but it's gonna be about so three weeks. Do those different things spell out to four months? Uh, are you still looking at around the same date? Is it April? of uh, it being fully installed by the end of April? I think it's gonna take a little bit more than that because the, they're giving them until the 19th of February. And it, it will be important to um, uh, take a look at uh, the contractor, uh, whether the contract has been lived up to, that's going to be very important. Now with that, uh, where are we at in that contract and uh, when is it time, I think you mentioned that that contract began in what, February of 2018 or somewhere around there. When does that contract end? The contract uh, now, uh, the contractors, it ends in April, this year. All right, and when do you begin the process for uh, replacing that? Because we don't want a gap of time. So we need for it to be a smooth transition for when this new contract with whomever is awarded uh, begins. So when does that process, do you have it structured so that it will go out early enough so that when this contract ends in April, the next one will begin smoothly, if indeed that's the, the route that this contract will stay in place till April? Yes, Madam Chair, the, the, direct, the deputy and I had our, our, our staff meeting yesterday and we do have our chief engineer and our acting parks administrator working on the th to renewing three contracts, which is our uh, restroom maintenance, uh, the pool maintenance, and the grass cutting. We're starting early because April's just around the corner and all of them end in April, expire. So we're working on that. So I think, um, uh, although I have other thoughts in mind, um, the, the, the last question that I'll ask at this time so that I can open it up to others is, so you mentioned these shortages of personnel. Uh, the re recreation director, I believe, if that's his, uh, his former title, um, had resigned and then uh, somebody was transferred. When are those critical positions going to be filled? Because 
our community needs as fully staffed uh, an office and a, an agency as possible. So what are the timelines on filling those positions? So the recreation administrator has been posted on DOA already. So we're just waiting on people to apply and getting us the names. As far as the parks administrator, we do have an acting parks administrator for 90 days, but it's not funded. So I have to work with BBMR to see how we can get that parks administrator position funded. And sorry, I, I just want to close on um, getting back to that uh, new pool operator by the contractor. Uh, how recently was that? Because we want to make sure that everything's in place. So if there was somebody that was uh, not putting in the chemicals properly or potentially testing at uh, inopportune times so that we were not getting good readings, um, that may have been what was going on in the past. Uh, we're, we're still trying to understand that situation, but this new person that is going to be handling the pools, when did they start and uh, what kind of, I guess, a quality assurance are you seeing out of them? Has it been long enough to see that there's a quality difference? There's a significant difference, um, Madam Chair. He started on uh, Friday, Friday last week. Okay, so a very short period of time, but have you, do you feel like you've seen some turnaround in the pools, the quality of the pools, the lack of murkiness? I mean, is, is the lack of murkiness there? The acidity Madam Chair, is the gone? The pools are shut down. Yes, there's a, a broken gauge in Dededo. So in looking at the quality of the, the water, I mean, we don't want another pool operator that's giving us the same green, murky, uh, condition. So is there a noticeable change? We need to be assured that there's a noticeable change. There's there's significant change in Deddy Doe. They're still maintaining it because as soon as they get the um, the gauge for Deddy Doe, they'll uh, get the public health to come back in and uh, we should open. As far as Aganya, they're still working on it. Has there been any change in the water yet? In have Aganya? you seen? Yes. Uh, uh, have they, are they draining it? They like drained they did it and they Deddy refilled it. So it's going to be a while till it filtrates and then you'll see the, the okay. difference. But it is not, it's not green. Okay. So my office wants to have, uh, even on the weekends, I want uh, daily updates. I want to see and hear about uh, changes in the water. And I want daily like I said, updates that you have seen it yourself, you've reported it to me, um, I will go down and do some spot checks, but we need to have that close communication uh, so that we can see that it is truly turning around or if it's not turning around, we need to know immediately. So I thank everybody for um, the time that they've allowed. Uh, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Senator Lee. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I just, I want to thank you very much for calling this long overdue hearing. I really want to thank everybody who was present when we started and especially those who are, of you who are still here. I know you're really hungry. I know you're ready to go home, especially for some of the kids in the audience. But it's important that we hear your voices. It's important. Um, one of the gentlemen that was testifying earlier said he's so glad to hear kids fight for the pool. And this is not just a lesson about the pool, it's a lesson on how our government works and how our government represents us. And at this point, it's pretty sad because I feel like our government's really failing our, our, our pool patrons and folks who really rely on DPR, f put their trust in DPR to make sure that these facilities are clean and safe for our kids. Um, but I just want to, on the record, request that instead of adjourning tonight's hearing that we um, extend it that we offer an additional opportunity because I have a line of questioning that I just I'm not going to have a time to answer but there are three main things that I wanted to try to get out of this hearing and I hope that the questions that I do have time to ask tonight or when we resume will help us to clarify three points I want us to focus on the past focus on the present and focus on the way forward so in terms of the past we all need to acknowledge where we are because of 
poor management because of a lack of maintenance, but most of all, a lack of communication. So DPR failed to communicate to the public and to government leaders about many of these issues. You're saying that you have this report from 2014. This is one of the first times I'm hearing about this. This is the first time I'm hearing about this. And what was communicated in a celebration at the Hagatnya pool when it reopened in April was that it was safe for the community, when in fact now we know it was not. We have gone through at least one budget cycle with no increase from DPR, no request for additional manpower, no request for additional equipment. There was nothing there, zero, no change. So that's how we can help you. We can help to try to finance additional you know, maintenance and and repairs for the pool, that's how legislators can help. But we can't help if we don't know about it. And if you're not coming to us asking for additional funding and additional support, then you know, it's a, it's a real challenge. So I just wanna put on the record that I did meet with the director at the Hagatnya pool on January 24th, 2019. This was when the pool was still shut down. We went through sev several of the things, you know, I, you walked me through the pumps and what you were gonna do to change it, and you opened again in April. And now we're back to square one, shutting down at the Hagatnya pool. I had requested with DPR to meet with you on Thursday, November 14th, that meeting was canceled. Tuesday, November 26th, that meeting was also canceled. And then Friday, November 29th at 2.30 p.m., all of those meetings were canceled. So it's not for a lack of us trying, we're trying to reach out and work with you, but I'm just not getting any response. So that was in the past, we can set that aside. But today, the present, I really would like for a status of alternative facilities. Where can the stakeholders go today in the meantime while Aganya and Dedido are closed? What solutions are we gonna have for the water aerobics folks, for our Manumku, for people with disabilities to use the pools in the weeks while you're implementing your plan. And then going forward, you know, one of the people who testified, uh, Mr. Flores was mentioning, we need to have new standards going forward. And Madam Chair, it's my hope that today, this committee can begin to establish how DPR will be judged, how our contractor will be judged. DPR will be held accountable for these standards, and if the department fails to meet these standards, I will call for your resignation, Mr. Chair, Mr. Director. And I know that you understand that and you're, you're willing to work with us. And so I think, again, we need to recognize the failures of the past. We need a plan, an immediate plan going forward for how our stakeholders are gonna be taken care of and what our long-term plan is for the future. So again, I have a number of questions that I, I, I'm not gonna have a chance to answer, have asked or answered tonight, Madam Chair, so I just on the record would like to request that instead of adjourning tonight that we um, continue this hearing at a, at a later date. And I, I would like to give opportunity to, to my colleagues to also have a chance to ask questions. Next, we will have uh, just a few minutes each for Senator Taitakui. Thank you, Madam Chair, and um, I have to uh, agree to the previous speaker, um, everything said to continue this on until the, that pool is opened, and um, I'll hold you definitely accountable. Um, Mr. Villagomez. Yes, Senator. Yes, Senator. You've been sitting there quiet all night. Yes, ma'am. Is there anything you would like to say? Uh, not at this point. Um, I think the, di the director has covered uh, pretty much everything pretty well um, so far. Have you at all gone down to the pool every single day to check on and monitor it? Is there somebody in your office has uh, done that or have you done it yourself? Yes, the engineer's been down there every day since for the past two weeks since the Hagatnya pool has been closed. Um, the director as well. He's uh, been on top of this. You know, Mr. Villagomez, I'm looking forward to you making sure this happens today and moving forward to that somebody is monitoring. Even though you have a contractor down there, don't assume everything is going to be good. It's, it's your responsibility, and I'm, ho I'm holding it to you, okay, that that happens as, as we move forward. Um, the suggestions that were made by some of those who spoke tonight 
were excellent suggestions. SOPs, the CDC coming in to protect our, our, our community was excellent suggestions. Cleaning the pool every single day, vacuuming the pool every single day, simple, simple rules. And, and I hope you can follow those as well. The one question I did have was, Mr. Banis, it's called emergency procurement. I know uh, Attorney Black mentioned it. You need to implement that emergency procurement, okay? Go down to uh, Add a Loop and tell them you'd like to start the process right now. We've got an event coming up in May that's very, very important. And we need that pool open and running, okay? Yes, yes, sir. So it's called emerg emergency procurement. Please look into that. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair, for the opportunity. Thank you very much, and I want to thank everyone for being here and staying late as well. Uh, I apologize for not being here at the beginning of the hearing, but I was able to catch some of it on the YouTube channel before uh, heading down. And I've been, of course, following everything in the news. And uh, you know, after hearing of the Ganya pool closing, uh, we learned, uh, some of the senators here learned from a video of a little girl that was shared with us, a little girl here in this room, telling us that the Harmon pool was also closed. So of course, uh, that was a big concern for all of us. And I'd like to thank the chair for having this oversight hearing. I'll just, uh, very quick questions, Mr. Director. Uh, for the recreation manager, as all of us have asked, that person has left and uh, now since the closing of the pool, you say someone has been checking it every day, but even after this recreation manager left, did you detail someone to the pool to uh, be on top of the contractor and check in on a daily basis? Yes, so um, Jonathan Kramer left in October, uh, November and December was the deputy and then we switched on January, we gave it to our chief engineer who's uh, Ariel Arevola. Okay, and that and person they, makes a trip to the they, pool they go, every they day to, and speaks to, to the contractor every day. Correct. Okay, and so you say that there are improvements at the Harmon pool, but you haven't seen any yet in the Ganya pool. So what is the timeline for the Harmon pool to reopen and what are you hoping for for the Ganya pool? Uh, for for, for Daddy Dale again, it, it, the, the pumps are running, the, the pool's clean, the backwash, the filtration system's working. It's just that we need that one gauge. So uh, I'm gonna constantly follow up on the, the, the contractor to see if they sourced out a gauge and how long will it take. Okay, I'd like to know, I'm sure everyone on this committee wants to know, uh, these children wanna know as soon as possible what that date is gonna be. So I appreciate that if you can provide that information. Um, also, the, I'm reading the testimony from the contractor who says it you know, includes this uh, cleaning and uh, it was mentioned about the daily vacuuming of the pool and the testing of the pool and um, were those things happening, this daily vacuuming and this daily cleaning? Because the contractor here says that um, the times that they're supposed to be cleaning, uh, you're still allowing people to use the pool. So is there a... Uh, a breakdown in the communication between you and the contractor or what's what's happening there if is is this true what they're saying Ooh, what what uh in the second page of the contractor's testimony okay. uh they said that in the time that uh furthermore operational costs have increased substantially in this effort and further compounded by the granting exclusive use of the pools by the DPR director to special interest groups and individuals outside of the normal operation hours, which is the period we are required to perform the subject services. So if you're closing the pool on Monday and this is the day for cleaning and they're supposed to clean before the pool opens or after the pool opens, uh, what is this that they're talking about that they don't have time to clean the pool? I'm, I'm thinking, um uh, maybe when the fire department comes or um, lifeguard get uh, lifeguard certification, we don't stay open. They don't stay open way too late. I think it, the, the, the latest they stay there is like seven or eight. So uh, I, I really can't talk for or speak for to the contractor what he's talking about. Well, I guess this is where the communication between whoever your uh, person that you're detailing down to the pool needs to, you know, be discussing with the contractor. 
Director Banas, can you give us some information about when the fire department might be there? Uh, I'll, I'll, what are the dates email. and times that they use the pool? I can email if you're you. going to use them as an example of this. I can email you the request because uh, I get requests for them to get recertified. Right, but everybody knows that the pools close on Mondays. Every single person. Yes, I understand. All the stakeholders that use the pool, they know that, that Monday is off limits. But, did it say Monday? It didn't specifically say Monday. It's saying normal operation hours that these groups your response, are being right. used. I'm yes, sorry, I Senator, understand. but your response to Senator Shelton was that some of these special interest groups that are using the pool. I didn't say any special interest group. Senator. Your response was that it was the Guam Fire Department, and then there was another group that you said might be using the pool? The Guam Fire Department, lifeguards. DPR uh, lifeguards? Uh, uh, Red Cross lifeguards. Red Cross lifeguards. Yeah, if, if they need to get recertified. So I, I have I have a request from GFD to get recertified, and I let them use it. Outside of the normal operating hours? Uh, not necessarily outside. It's like until 8, so I don't know where the contractor is coming from as far as, you know, the, the, the late hours. Okay. Well... Thank you. I guess, you know, for me, my suggestion would just be that you really have this person, if you're going to put a recreational manager in or uh, someone detailed there to be on top of these contra this contractor to make sure that they're fulfilling their obligations, whether it is all day Monday cleaning the pool or every other day before the opening, or before the closing, that really needs to happen. Okay. And that's it. And again, thank you to all of the kids who are here to testify and the coaches and everyone, the parents who are here. I also grew up in this pool, so it's very disheartening to see uh, what's happening to it and how it's putting you all out and this inconvenience and especially putting our kids in danger. I think I saw Mia a couple weeks ago and she told me her friends are being stung by jellyfish and I can't imagine, you know, as parents that you want to allow your children to practice out in the beach and we want to get this pool um, up and running as soon as possible. So thank you very much. So uh, I too want to thank everybody for your time. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, uh, it's important to hear those comments from you. So uh, it's, it's, it's an important part of the process of making things happen. So your letters were important to receive. I am looking for someone to serve as a representative so that there's more communication um, because that will be key to making sure that this doesn't take as long uh, as it has. Um, so. There has been a request, uh, even myself, I have uh, questions that I wasn't able to get to. So there was a request to recess it. Um, I have heard, uh, Director, that you will be off island for medical leave uh, or for medical reasons. When are you returning from uh, that medical trip? I'll be back on the 24th, Monday. So let me look at my calendar. Um, yeah, I was I was hoping because I didn't want to leave people hanging. I was hoping to uh, to sort of nail down a a date. But so in that week, uh, sometime between the 25th and the 28th, we will put out the notices again and let people know that this is continuing. Um, and hopefully that time that you'll, you'll be seeking medical attention, that that's also going to get those things in place that you've been discussing. The gauge will see if this new pool operator is making the difference that needs to happen uh, and these sort of things. If that new machine is up and operating at Hagatnya, and again, that it's making the difference. Um, an important thing is getting that new sand filtration system. Uh, hopefully, we will be able to open the pool with, without it, but we need to have that more permanent fix. And then we need to be, uh, as was mentioned, we need to be looking for that funding. We do need to hear from the Department of Parks and Rec when they see that they have needs like that so that the legislature 
can be looking for answers. Uh, we need to be working together in that way. And so you need to be making sure that that information is coming to us so that we can be providing that funding uh, back to you. So we will recess at this time and then uh, sometime between the 25th and the, the 28th, hopefully we will have some positive answers as to these fixes working their way through the system and uh, we can continue our questioning. So what we will do is we will recess the oversight hearing. The time is now 8.06 and then we will see people back uh, and we do need to work at making sure that uh, the contractor is coming in uh, one way or the other. Um, we need some real answers with the contractor and, and their role in all of this. So uh, I do thank everybody. I know it's been a long day for all of you. I do appreciate all of your concerns being shared. Uh, we have to work all together um, up here, you sharing your concerns, and then us uh, making sure that something happens to address them. Um, so please have a, a good evening and a, a safe ride home. Sujus Masi.